Uncle William, how are you? Are you okay? Doing well? Here, take this money. I came to give you the money. This is too much money, Peter. I only told you that I needed a little money to buy a motorcycle for my child. But you brought so much money. You don't need to worry. Just take this money and go buy a motorcycle for your son. Peter, I could never repay your kindness in my entire life. I had no idea how generous you could be. I only asked you for a little money, and you gave me so much. I will always be grateful to you. I'm just heading to my office now. Just take this money and buy a motorcycle for your son. Thank you very much, Peter. You look very happy. What's going on? Tell me too. I don't have the words to describe my happiness. I had asked Peter for a little money, but it seems my words touched his heart so much that he came to our house with a lot of money. What do you mean? I had told Peter to give me just half the money, and I would arrange the rest myself to buy the motorcycle. But Peter came with all the money and said I shouldn't worry and should buy the bike for our son. So, your acting worked? And you got the money from Peter as you wanted? Yes, you're right. All right, now go to work and earn as much money as you can. Yes, fine. I'm going to work now. When our son comes back from college, give him this money and tell him to buy the motorcycle he likes. I will go with him to the market in the evening to get it. All right, I will give your message to our dear son. Okay, all right. Look how happy he was when I gave him the money. Tears of joy came to his eyes. And look at my wife. She always doubts such poor and needy people and told me not to give them any money. But I didn't listen to her and gave them the money anyway. Of course, I earned the money. I can give it to whomever I want. What's her problem? Now I should not be thinking about these things while sitting in the car. Peter, how are you? Are you okay? Yes, boss, I'm perfectly fine. How about you? Are you well? Any news? I'm giving some documents. You need to go to the bank and meet Mr. Richard. Tell him these are the same documents you requested from us last month. Yes, sir, I went there last month, but the issue is still the same. These are the same documents he requested from us last month. Okay, fine. Don't waste any time here. Just go and let me know what happens. All right, sir. I will inform you about whatever happens. Mr. Richard, I came to you last month about this same issue. Can you please tell me what the update is? Have you made any progress on the task I informed you about? Yes, I have looked into the documents and other related matters. You don't need to worry. I'll inform my boss. As soon as there's any update, I'll let you know. All right, I'm leaving now. We will meet later. Okay, take care. Why are you asking so many questions? You know I have a business, and this is my earning from it, which I come here to deposit. You shouldn't have any issues with that. Your business isn't big enough to earn such a large amount of money. You need to explain where this money is coming from. Who is giving you so much money? Every week, you deposit a significant amount of dollars, and you have never answered our questions. This is not acceptable. Will you just keep asking me questions, or will you also deposit my money? I'm here for a reason. Please do your job. But it is very concerning that someone with a small business like yours is depositing such a large amount every week. We can't understand where this money is coming from. It seems your bank is getting jealous of me. And there's no other reason. Otherwise, no one asks so many questions. It's not about right or wrong. It's about principles. You can't be earning this much. You just have a small shop, yet you deposit so much money. It almost feels like you have 15 to 20 shops to earn such an amount. All right, all right, enough is enough. I'm tired of answering your questions. Here, take my money. I'm leaving now. Please message me the receipt. You're a very clever man. We don't know what you're up to, but you never satisfy our concerns. Okay, okay, no need to talk more. Just do what I've asked, 
and then I'll be grateful. Fine. Go ahead and deposit at the cash counter. Thank you very much, my dear friend. Next, please. I don't know what's gotten into people these days. How can they be so heartless? His own relatives are living in poverty, and look at him, depositing so much money in the bank. Doesn't it occur to him to help his poor uncle a little? His uncle sits in distress before others. Today, I gave him money so he could buy a motorcycle for his son. And the amount Leo is depositing in the bank could buy not one, but ten motorcycles. Uncle William, what's wrong? Why are you standing here looking so worried? If there's something bothering you, please tell me. It's just, son, life brings its own set of troubles. I'm a bit troubled by something and was standing here thinking about it. Would you like to tell me? If you feel better talking about it, please share. I was just thinking about how good a person Peter is. I've never seen anyone like him in my entire life. He gave me money a few days ago to buy a motorbike. I have to repay him, of course, and was just thinking about how to do that. Yes, uncle, that's how it is. When you borrow money from someone, you have to return it. Yes, that's what's troubling me. I was thinking about how to repay him. Well, Peter doesn't lack money. If he wants, he may not even take the money back from you. Yes, that's true. Peter has a lot of money, but of course, he lent me money, and he also gave me a deadline to return it by a certain date. I was just thinking about how I'm going to pay him back. I understand. Well, I don't have enough money to help you, otherwise, I would have given it to you without expecting anything in return. You asked me what was troubling me, and I told you. I didn't ask you for money. I just shared my problem because you asked. What's wrong, William? You seem very down today. It looks like either some foreigner has upset you, or you've had some other trouble. Am I right? Yes, today I tried very hard to trap Carter, but he's a clever man and didn't fall into my trap. What did you say to Carter that he didn't fall into your trap? How is it possible that he didn't fall into your hands? I just told him that Peter gave me the money for the bike. Then I said the money Peter gave me was a loan. And now I'm wondering how I'll return that money to Peter. You turned out to be a big fool. Don't you know that Peter and Carter are very good friends? If Carter tells Peter about this, your secret will be revealed, and you'll be in big trouble. Do you realize that? Even if he does tell, I don't care. I have plenty of tricks up my sleeve to save myself, and if, for example, Carter discusses it with Peter and Peter comes to ask me, I'll simply say, yes, Peter, the money I took from you was indeed a loan, and I will return that money to you. Peters will think that William is a dignified person who doesn't take money from people for free but rather as a loan. But let me tell you one thing, Peter is not that naive. Until now, You've never returned his money, and he has been giving you money for quite some time without ever asking for it back. But today, it occurred to you to return it to him. Peter is not foolish either. He'll understand your intentions. All right. Don't talk nonsense now and don't add to my worries either. Carol, today is the weekend, and I am going grocery shopping. Please make a list of the necessary items for the house so I can get them. Yes, Peter I have made the list. The essential items for the house are listed. Please go and get them. Sure, and please write down all the items. I can't go to the market repeatedly today. It's my weekend, and I need to get all the household chores done at once so that I can complete them. There is just a little plumbing work, and then there's the rest of the grocery shopping, etc. And if I remember anything else, I'll let you know. Okay, all right. Here's the list of items. Please give me the groceries. Take the list and pack all these items for me. Sure, why not? How are you, Peter? It's been so long since we met. Is everything fine at home? Yes, I'm fine. Just caught up with work. It's so hectic that I hardly get any time. Today was my day off from the office, so I came to the market. How about you? How's everyone at your home? Peter, 
If I were to ask you something, you wouldn't mind, would you? Of course not. Tell me, what's on your mind? And why would I be unhappy about what you want to talk about? Whatever is going on in your mind or heart, you can ask me. Peter, God has given you so much. You have such a big house, such a big car, and you're settled in a good job. Yes, there's no doubt about that. I'm very grateful for the God's kindness, and I'm leading a very good and peaceful life. But where did this question suddenly come from in your mind? Will you explain to me? Why did you ask me about this, Carter? I just asked you this because a few days ago, you lent money to Uncle William, and he was very troubled and yesterday night he was saying that he need to return the money to you. Peter he can't afford to pay them back. He's a poor man, you should think about the poor, Peter. Did Uncle William tell you that I told him that he needs to return the money to me? Yes, I saw him yesterday standing in front of the market, and when he saw me, he looked very sad and said that he's thinking about how to return the money to you. Carter, are you 100% sure about what you're telling me? Is there any possibility of misunderstanding? Hearing that Uncle William told you that I gave him that money as a loan, and I also gave him a deadline to return it? Yes, Peter, why would I lie to you? I've already informed you about it. He was troubled about this matter yesterday, and when I went to him, he started telling me that you gave him the money for the motorcycle and also mentioned that this money must be returned to me by the specified time. Alright, Carter, I don't want to discuss this further. I don't want to spoil my weekend, it's my day off today, and I want to spend it doing household chores. Peter, I feel like you're trying to hide something from me, my friend. If there's anything bothering you, just share it with me. I'm your friend. No, Carter, there's nothing I am trying to hide from you. I'm just trying to keep our conversation short because I'm short on time. I need to go home, and I have a lot of tasks pending there. I only get one day off in a week when I have to do all the chores. But your face is telling me that you're upset about something. Can you please talk to me? Is there anything bothering you? No, Carter, there's nothing. Just let me go now. I'll catch you later. All right, Peter. Take care. We'll catch up later. I don't understand what Carter was saying. I had clearly stated before giving him the money that he wouldn't need to return it to me because this was not a loan. I've helped Uncle William many times before, and he still hasn't repaid me. Moreover, I never asked him to return the money because of his financial situation. Even few days ago, when he asked for half the amount for the motorcycle, I gave him the full sum. Despite this, what Carter said has left me a bit tense. As for what Carter mentioned about Uncle William saying that I gave him a deadline to return the money, that's not true either. When I went to his house to give him the money, there was no such conversation. I don't know why my mind is so agitated, and thoughts of what my wife said keep troubling me. If this turns out to be true, I won't spare him. Because I helped him only because he's a poor man. And another thing is that yesterday I heard from William's brother's son, Leo, who works as a shopkeeper, Something that completely caught me off guard. I don't know what the truth is because only the gods knows what's hidden from us. But my mind keeps going back to what my wife said to me a few days ago. What's wrong, Peter? Since you came back from market, you've been lost in strange thoughts. If something is bothering you, you can discuss it with me. If you don't want to discuss it, I won't force you. Well, I'm just thinking about something, and if it turns out to be true, how will I control my anger? I don't understand. If there is something, you can share it with me. I went to market, and there I met Carter. He told me that William met him and said that the money Peter gave me is a loan, and I have to return that money to Peter. William hasn't returned a single penny to me till now. Suddenly, he got this idea. Maybe he was only trying to get money from my friend? It means you gave him money without telling me, and I even tried to stop you. William is a clever, cunning person whose job is to trick people, but you got angry at my words and told me that I interfere in every matter. That's why I didn't say anything to you, and maybe what you're thinking is true. Just as he took money from you, he might also be trying to get money from your friend. And another thing is that when I went to the bank yesterday, William's brother's son, Leo, was there 
and the bank officials were questioning him a lot, because he had brought a lot of cash with him. They were asking about his source of income. Peter, I'm telling you again, I had warned you before, I have heard from very authentic sources about William and his family that they always pretend to be poor, saying they have nothing, no money for food, no money for clothes, and they play this drama to extract money from people, both husband and wife. They keep an eye on several families and visit their homes. Tourists, who comes from abroad to our country for outing, I also listens to similar stories he takes money from them. That's why I don't meet these people, and that's why I warned you. Dear husband, I've been wanting to talk to you for quite some time, but you've been busy. But now that you have a moment, I want to tell you something important. Yes, tell me, what do you want to talk about? A few days ago, my friend came to me. Her husband has taken some loans from the bank, which has made her very distressed. I told her I would talk to my husband, because he help a lot of needy people and do charities, so he might help you with the bank loan. Yes, you did the right thing. I'll help them with their bank loan. Call your friend and tell her to ask her husband to come to me. I'll take him to the bank, and whatever loan he has, I'll clear it for him. If you give them cash, that's fine too. Arrange for cash and I'll handle the rest. There's no need to worry. I'll personally go to the bank with him and have a word with the bank officials to ensure they don't cause any further trouble. Alright, that sounds good too. You were suggesting the right thing. Take my friend's husband to the bank, have a chat with them, and get his loan cleared. Yes, that's fine. There's no need to worry. You call your friend, and I'll go with her husband. Yes, I understand your point, but if you provide cash, it's even better. My husband wouldn't be able to face your husband out of embarrassment. Please try to understand my perspective. If you just give us cash, we'll manage it ourselves. There is no problem with that. My husband is very understanding. And he said he'll go to the bank with your husband and clear the loan himself. You were saying the same thing again. If you were helping us, then don't make us feel embarrassed. Just give us the cash, and we'll clear the loan ourselves. If my husband goes along, what's the problem with that? I didn't tell my husband that I asked you guys for help. If he finds out, he'll be very angry, so I don't want my husband to go with yours. I want to put the money in his hands and not tell him where it came from, and he can go to the bank and clear the loan himself. Okay, that's fine. If you feel that way, I'll ask my husband to give me the cash, and I'll pass it on to you so you can free yourselves from this bank loan. I hope you would understand my point. Thank you for helping us. No problem at all. Always stay happy and prosperous. There is no need to worry anymore. Mr. Leo? Yes, officer. My name is Leo. What's the matter? Why have you come? I'm from the income tax department, and your bank has reported that you have a lot of money in your account. We don't have any evidence of where you're earning so much money from, and you haven't provided any proof to the bank. So, we've come to investigate you. Sir, you can see my shop. I earn all this money from here. Why are you suspecting me? I don't understand. Listen to me. You can fool the world, but not the income tax department. Such income isn't possible from such a small shop. You need to give us proof of where you're getting this much money from, or else we'll have to arrest you. Sir, this is my shop, and I earn all this money here. I've told you before, it's not easy to fool us. Such a huge income isn't possible from such a small shop. You'll have to give us proof. What proof do you want from me? I'm a proper taxpayer. What else do you need from me? I think you're not going to listen to us. We have many ways. You'll have to come with us. Sir. There's a misunderstanding. I'm not that kind of person. I've always earned money from my business. I'm telling you to stop lying. Come with us. Leo, this is the last time I'm asking you. Tell us where this money came from. If you tell us the truth, I promise we'll let you go. Otherwise, you'll have to spend many years in jail. You can't even estimate how many years. 
Sir, can you promise me that if I tell you the truth, you'll let me go? Yes, I promise. If you tell us the truth, we'll let you go. Officer, this money belongs to my uncle William and his wife. They take money from people by pretending to be poor, and then they give that money to me to keep in my account so that people don't suspect them. This money belongs to them, not me. I was just earning 5% to 10% commission from it because they used to give me a share, and that was enough for me. Are you telling the truth that this money belongs to your uncle and his wife? Yes, officer, I'm telling you the truth. This money is not mine. You can ask them. I have no connection with this money. Are you sure that this money belongs to your uncle? E, 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 yes, officer, this money is not mine. You can ask them. I have no connection with this money. Please believe me. All right, I'll send my team to your uncle's house and ask them too, because maybe you are lying. Okay, please ask them. They only keep their savings with me so that people don't suspect them. Officer, why have you come to our house? We don't even know you. I am an income tax officer, and I have arrested your brother's son Leo. He has disclosed to us that the money in his account belongs to you. Is this true? Who's Leo? I don't know any Leo and it's been three years since I met him. How can I trust someone I haven't even met? It's clear that you have no connection to this money? Yes, of course, I have no connection to this money. I don't even know this Leo. How can I give him my money? Yes officer, I have no connection with that money. Leo is my brother's son. It's been three years since we've had clashes with our family. Why would I give him my money? That's something to consider. Okay, all right. Can I go now? Yes, you can go. We just needed the information you provided. Thank you so much, sir. We're ruined. All our money is gone. Why? What are you saying? Are you in your senses? Leo has been arrested by the income tax authorities, and he confessed to them that all the money he has belongs to us. Oh no. What are you saying? What did you tell the officer? E, e. E, I just told them that the money isn't ours. Your mind is messed up. You know how many years of hard work it took us, and you ruined it all within a minute. Don't talk nonsense. If I were to say in front of him that this money is ours, he would arrest me and ask where all this money came from. Then what would I say? And those people whom we fooled and took money from, would they spare us? They would come to our house and catch us. Everything has been ruined for us. Yes. All our hard work of our lifetime has been wasted in just a minute. I'm very scared. If Leo mentions our name again, the income tax officials will come to our house. Yes, I'm afraid of that too. They might come to our house again, and when they ask people in our neighborhood about us, and they tell them that we've given them money, then the consequences will be terrible. We might even go to jail. Your words are giving me a lot of tension. Please be quiet for a while. I don't understand what to do. Suddenly, all our hard work of a lifetime is about to end in a minute. Yes, you're right. If people find out about this, they won't trust us anymore. That's why I told the officer that we have no connection with the money. Yes, you did the right thing. This was our only chance to escape. There was no time left for the truth to come out in front of the people. Leo kept telling the officer that he has no connection to this money. The officer didn't agree with him. Dear viewers, how their entire life's earned money, which they accumulated by deceiving people, is slipping away from their hands. And if they accept this money they will have to go to jail. You all must understand that God sees everything. Humans may deceive each other and indulge in whatever tricks they want, but nothing is hidden from God, and this truth will spread far and wide. This fact started appearing in Peter's notice as well, that Leo is saying that he has no connection to this money, but rather, it belongs to his uncle William. And after that, William and his wife became completely empty-handed, with not a single penny left. No matter how much you try to act, no one will believe you anymore. Even if you ever need it, people will still think you're lying and won't give you a single penny for your help. You've made us all look like fools, William. 
My wife even stopped me, but despite that, I continued to help you. However, you had a mask on your face the whole time. Now it's all out in the open, and your truth has been revealed. Peter, I've made a huge mistake. Greed blinded me, and I deceived many people. Now, no one is willing to help me, and no one believes in what I say anymore. Everyone thinks I'm just acting like before. All the money I had is gone, and they don't have a single penny left. That's why everyone is saying I am lying because I have lost their trust. I used lies and fraud to obtain the hard-earned money of those people for so many years, and perhaps I forgot that God is watching. Today, I have nothing left, and all the wealth has slipped away from my hands. If there is any truth left, no one will believe me now, and everyone will think I'm still lying. Therefore, I need to ask forgiveness from God and never pretend to be poor because when God blesses you, you should be grateful. If you keep saying, I have nothing, then it becomes evident in front of you. So, always speak the truth because God hates liars. I'm leaving now. I don't have time anymore. Yes, you should apologize to everyone and also from God. Because he hate liars. I hope you like my work. Thanks for watching Magia Cartoons. May God bless you all amen. See you tomorrow with a new topic. Take care everyone. Feel free to contact at nijiaanimations at gmail.com.